guys hope you're having a great day today. All right, today I'm in a very different place for doing Abundantly Blessed. It's not as peaceful as outside on the mountain, but I'm in my car and I'm waiting for a child to be done at the dentist. So with everything going on right now, they limit the people inside the place and I can be in there. But um, I said, you know, what? I'll just go sit in my car. That's fine. Just send me a text when you're done. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So I'm glad you're here. I thought, you know what? I can record. It might be a little bit more quiet. You might hear some cars because we're in city living here where there's trucks and stuff going by. But we can still read God's word wherever we're at, right? You can read it in the city, out in a car, in your home, in your pantry, wherever, bathroom, anywhere anywhere that you want to be and get some quiet time for yourself. So we are reading the book of Exodus, which is awesome. We were reading about the last part was Moses getting these people through the Israelites, right? And then how, what God told him to do and just go and say these words to Pharaoh and, and I'll have him, you know, I'm going to harden his heart, but we're going to get through this. So we went through the, the last one was the eighth and ninth plague. It's the last part we finished. So this week we're reading um, chapters 11 through 15. So I'm going to start reading. I'm reading from the ESV version. Whatever version you want to read from, go right ahead. It does not matter. This is just the one I'm going to do. If you want to get the Bible Hub app and you can go through and read word for word for what I am or just listen because you've already read it this week and we can kind of talk about and discuss some things. So we're going to start in chapter 11, a final plague threatened. So here's the, the plagues and they're threatened. They're not action, just threatened, right? All right, the Lord said to Moses, yet one more plague more I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Speak now in the hearing of the people that they ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So real fast pretty cool like here God's speaking to Moses and he's telling him what to say and he's like here this is what's going to happen so all you gotta do is do it and follow my instructions and I'm gonna get you through it so it's the same thing in our own lives right we read the Word of God we're reading what God's telling us to do we know what his promises are we hear he says don't worry cast your your worries on me because he cares for you right don't worry about things don't think about tomorrow all, he tells us all these things to do and he, he gives them to us so that we can do them. We just gotta do them just like we're reading all these things. So here he's being specific because Moses didn't have a Bible to read and learn from, but we just gotta do it. And then he tells him what he's gonna do. And then he's, he's saying, ask the neighbors for their gold and silver. So he's giving them favor. So these Israelites who are slaves or were slaves, he's gonna have them come out of this more abundantly than before. They're gonna walk out of this whole exodus not being poor and desolate and dead and sick and all these things. And that's pretty cool. So God can give favor to you no matter what your situation is, right? You think that maybe you just grew up poor or you grew up not having the right education or, or maybe your situation, you know, for a long time I went into that situation of like, I have 10 kids, we don't have anything. We're never gonna have anything because they're expensive. And kids are expensive. But I had that mentality that we're never gonna have enough. Forever, I had that mentality. Until I started like, no, that's not what God says. It's like, why, if God's blessing me with kids, why would I think that I would have any less in my life? Right? So once I started that with that mentality and started trusting God with my finances, that's when things started working and there was never a lack and there was never not enough. There was an abundance, but it took me saying, okay, and believe in that because you got to believe it you can't just like oh it's gonna happen no it's not gonna happen you got to actually believe it and let the Lord work in your life so all right so the Lord gave verse 3 the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians he's favoring them in the sight of their enemies moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servant can you hear the music and in the sight of the people all right so I had to move my car because there was a car that pulled up next to me and their music was really loud. <laughs> so I'm over here. So let me go back to um, verse four. So Moses said in verse three, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. So Moses, God made him very great, which is cool. Um, verse 4, so Moses said, Thus says the Lord, about midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, 
even to the firstborn of the slave girl who was behind the handmill and all the firstborn of the cattle. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. But not dog shall growl again, growl against any of the people of Israel, either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. So he, God wanted them to know that, hey, we're going to make a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. There's a distinction. Dis, I got to speak properly. There's a distinction between Christian and non-Christian. There's got to be a distinction somewhat. And all these, your servants, will come down to me and bow down saying, get out, you and all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his land. Not at all, right? All right, so we got the Passover, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. And then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire with unleavened bread, and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts, and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this is pretty cool because here he's getting them ready for this Passover. Here's the people that we had to stay. They didn't have to get ready and go anywhere. They never had to get basically dressed, right? <laughs> no, I mean, they do, but you know what I mean? They're not going anywhere in their life. But here he's like, get ready. You're going to eat this meal with your belt fastened and your sandals on your feet and your staff in hand like you are ready to roll and you are ready to go. Put on the action of getting ready because something good is going to happen, right? And then he says, put this on your house to show I'm going to pass through and I'm not going to let the enemy come and take anything out of your house because I'm passing through for the protection. And this day shall be for you a memorial day and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but whatever needs to eat, what everyone needs to eat, that alone may be prepared by you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this very day I brought your host out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statue forever. In the first month, from the 14th day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the mon month at evening. For seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwelling places, you, sh you shall eat unleavened bread. Verse 21, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select 
lambs for yourselves according to your clans and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of your door of his house until the morning for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. I like that verse because you think that God sent the plague to kill them but it says the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer who's the destroyer Satan is the destroyer who comes to steal kill and destroy he does not allow the destroyer to enter your houses or to strike you you shall observe this right as a statue for you and your sons forever and when you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep the service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it's the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshiped. And then the people of Israel went and did so as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So they did. So they went out and did it. They did these things, right? got ready. They're getting ready to get out of this land of Egypt. It's going to be exciting. All right, the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn. Verse 29, at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. There was not a house where someone was not dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron by night and said, Up, go out from among my people, both you and the people of Israel. Go and serve the Lord as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said and be gone. And bless me also. So he's like, just get out of here. But would you bless me at the same time too? Hmm. Hmm. All right. The Exodus is the great Exodus. The Egyptians were urgent with the people to send them out of the land in haste. So God prepared them, right? They wanted to get them out. So God was like before when they had their dinner, he had them get ready, get everything ready. Go collect your, your gold and silver from your neighbors. Get that stuff ready to go because I'm going to have you go do something. God might have be doing something in your own life where he's like, prepare, prepare, prepare. Because something great is going to happen in your own life. I know for myself, I know when we moved here, I had a lot of quiet time, a lot of quiet time. And I could have just like did nothing but watch TV or movies or did nothing. But I was like, okay, we're going to use this opportunity to grow more in God's word and learn more and take a lot. And I took a lot of time studying and learning. And then I see now why God is using it. But I had to get in that word. I had to take that time and prepare. You say, prepare your field because that harvest is coming, right? They had to prepare because God was going to take them out and get them on their great exodus out. So, the Egyptians were urgent. This is verse 33. The Egyptians were urgent with the people to send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we shall all be dead. So the people took their um, dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls being bound up in their cloaks on their shoulders. The people of Israel had also done as Moses told them, for they had asked the Egyptians for silver and gold and for clothing. They asked, they asked the people that were keeping them in, in, in bondage for their clothing, silver and gold. Now, would your, would your, like, if you were a slave, would your masters give you that? It doesn't even sound rational, does it? At all. But with the favor of the Lord, he will. Sometimes you might think in your job that, you know, if you ask for a raise or you want an income, if you don't have one, and you just don't, well, I don't think I should ever, it doesn't even sound rational that you can do those things. That's when you can let God step in and do something miraculous in your life. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they ask. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. They plundered them. And the people of Israel sojourned from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. So 600,000 men. So I would almost have to guess that at least double, right? More than double because that's like the wives and the kids, right? A mixed multitude also went up with them mixed multitude and very much livestock both flocks and herds and they baked unleavened cakes out of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not wait nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves but God gave them something to get it ready to go the time that the people of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years at the end of 430 years on that very day all the hosts of the Lord went up 
out from the land of Egypt. It was a night of watching by the Lord to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So this is the same night is night is a night of watching kept to the Lord by all the people of Israel throughout their generations. The institution of the Passover. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the statue of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat it of it, but every slave that is bought for money may eat of it after you have circumcised him. No foreigner or hired worker may eat of it. It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. If a stranger shall, shall sojourn with you and would keep the Passover to the Lord, let it all his males be circumcised. Then he may come near and keep it. He shall be as a native of the land." But no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native and one for the stranger who sojourns among you. All the people of Israel did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. And on that very day, the Lord brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their host. Pretty cool, right? But God was very specific with what he wants, wanted them to do. Just like God is very specific what he wants us to do in our lives, right? Congregation of the firstborn, chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. So the feast of unleavened bread. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today is the month of Abib, you are going out. And when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen with you, and no leaven shall be seen with you in all your territory. You shall tell your son on that day it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. Because they want them to teach the next generation, right? Like God wants us to teach our kids and the next generation of children so that they can continue that, right? Because if nobody teaches, no one's going to do it. And it shall be to you as a sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep the statue at its appointed time from year to year. When the Lord brings you into the land of Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be your, the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. First, every firstborn of, your, of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when it, in time to come, your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand, the Lord brought us up out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. It, is, it shall be as a mark on your hand or frontlets between your eyes, for by a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. So remember these things that God had done. Pillars of cloud and fire. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God knew, all right, I'm going to get them through this. Because if they see what they're going to be heading into, they're not going to want to go there. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Sukkoth and encamped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. God was showing them exactly where they needed to go. Like God gives us, they didn't have the Holy Spirit back then. God gives us the witness inside of us, the Holy Spirit, to guide you through what you are to do by day and night, right? So much better having that inside. Crossing the Red Sea, chapter 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Pi Heroth, between 
McDole in the sea in front of someplace. <laughs> you shall encamp facing it by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. All right. So this one's happening. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people. And they said, what is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? Are we crazy? And they didn't say that. So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him and took 600 chosen chariots, all the other chariots of Egypt, with the officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them. All foes, Pharaoh's houses, horses, and chariots, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them and camped at the sea by Pi, that place in front of the Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near the people of Israel, lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. Do you ever fear like there is a great multitude of giants just coming at you, ready to attack you and bring you down? Do you ever fear that? Do you ever think that in your life? You just feel like there's this great big giant problem that is just going to come overtake your life? Let's find out what they did. So first thing they did is they looked to Moses. Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not. Fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. You have only to be silent. Sometimes when things happen and we want to complain and we want to go, ah, oh, this just doesn't seem fair. And we want to call our friends and we want to call our moms and we want to complain, 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 complain about things. Sometimes it's great just to be silent and give that to God and let God deal with it and not have to sit there and worry about it and not have to sit there and uh, complain to somebody because they messed up and ruined your life, right? We just can do that. So then the Lord says to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Quit complaining. Does God ever tell that to us? Like we just want to start complaining when we have a little bit of inkling of like, that's not right and a little bit of opposition. So we feel like we want to start complaining to God. No, God says move forward forward lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground and I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host his chariots and his horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh his chariots and his horsemen then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel and there was this cloud and the darkness and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning, watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud look down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots, and upon the horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea. They didn't even get wet the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. 
Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on that seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. I mean, that's a miraculous thing, right? To like, could you imagine walking through that and you see that big giant wall of water here and there, and you're like, oh my goodness, it doesn't even seem like logical but you're going to get through it. And then they're going to get through it and they're going to come out the other side. And they did. And they were like, oh my goodness. They feared the Lord and they believed in him and in his servant Moses. They believed what Moses was telling them because God was making it happen. Then you're going to see, we're going to see so much more. You know, people want to see miracles. They want to see God give them provision. They want to see God bless them. They want to see all these things. And then when God does, they're like, oh my goodness, this is great. Yet wait what happens a couple days later they forget just like these guys right god brought them out of that and then they started complaining when things were going wrong and they wanted to go oh. but or yeah they just they they're not continuing onward they're forgetting what god is doing in their lives so right now in your own life when god you're doing something in your life and opposition comes against you and those giants or those egyptians are right there they're coming after you i mean they are chasing after you that problem it seems like it's coming after you so forcefully or you don't even know what to do and you're just like that relationship just feels like it is just tearing you down and you don't even know what to do stop stop running and go okay god is going to make a way God is going to make this work. I'm going to trust in him completely and stand firm, like Moses said, and listen for that inner voice and that leading of the Lord and watch what he will do to open up things in your own life so that you can move forward. And then when you do go, okay, look what God did. Remember that and hold on to that. Write it down so that the next time this happens, more opposition's coming your way. That's what happens in our world. You can truly remember, look what God did. Okay, I have to remember that because if he saw me through that, he's going to see me through this. This is nothing compared to what I went through before, right? And you are still here and you are going forward. So you have to focus on that because we all go through things. We all go through opposition. We all go through problems. It's when we remember what God will do and we got to stand firm and remember that he took care of us then. He'll take care of us now. All right, chapter 15, we got the song of Moses. So they're going through, they're having a hallelujah moment, right? We go through our weeks. We go to church on Sunday. We get that great message from our pastor. We have that great praise and worship and we have that hallelujah moment and we're singing our praises and we're doing great. And we're going to sing those praises and then I, I can almost guess that the next chapter or a couple chapters, maybe we'll give them two chapters. We're not going to read it, but probably like two or three. Yeah, there's going to, there, there'll be a few more chapters where that hallelujah moment is going to be forgotten. Just like when we go to church and have a hallelujah moment on Sunday and then opposition comes a few days later. And what, are they, what do we do? We don't want to have that. We want to have that hallelujah moment all the time. So let's read their hallelujah moment and their song of Moses. So then Moses and the people of Israel, this is chapter 15, sang this song to the Lord saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphant gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. Underline that and highlight that. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And he is. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his, and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Um, your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap, and the deeps congealed in the hearts of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. So their praise is like 
thankfulness and gratitude and remembering what he did. Like, what is God doing? Remember that. And it's the things he did. You did these things. You sank them into the sea. You overtook them. You're doing these things. We got to constantly be speaking out what God is doing in our lives for good. And it might not look like a great big seawall going up next to us, but it might be the little things. Thankful for food that I'm eating today. Thankful I have a car to drive somewhere. Thankful I have a job. Thankful I have a husband that's home. Thankful I have kids to call my own. Whatever it is, be speaking those things out. Verse 11, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The people have heard they tremble. Pains have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them. Because of the greatness of your arm, they are still as stone. Till your people, O Lord, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased. Have you been purchased? I've been purchased. <laughs> you will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. God is going to bring you in and plant you on your own mountain. The place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Didn't have anything get all muddy. Didn't have to go through that. Just walk through dry land. Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. They were praising God over and over and dancing and being joyful and singing praises of look at what he did. In your home, it is so important and, and so beneficial to be put on some praise and worship music and sing it. When you listen to other music that's pop, regular pop radio, it's great. There's songs. There's catchy tunes. I get that. I like a good song. But when you're singing about things that are depressing and how this relationship is broken and how you're broken and you're all these things and have to go out and party and to be free all these things you're praising these things that are not adding any value to your life throw on some praise music today and sing some songs that praise what god is doing in your life and praise what's going on in your home and in your own personal life and things like that those are great things be praising the lord for your salvation and that's my favorite thing is throw those in and i'll listen to some praise music all the time all the time on my Google Home or on my playlist from YouTube. I'll be listening to all the songs and praising God for what he's doing in my life. And a song come on and I can sing it and go, that's right, because all your promises, God, are yes and amen. And Or this is how I fight my battles is by praising the Lord. That's what you do. When you hear those things, it's so good to keep listening to them. And you can keep that going and going, that's right, because you it's simple to sing those catchy tunes and be reminded of what God is doing in your own life. And it's praising that enemy back, getting him gone because he has no place in your life. That's what you want. You want to give him no place. If you're praising the Lord, the enemy can't come and put thoughts of doubt in your mind because you're praising the Creator, the one who Satan doesn't want anything to do be with that, be a part of, correct? That's what we gotta do. All right, we got the bitter water made sweet. All right, we're back in our mountain area child was finished with the appointment so I got to uh had to stop so now I'm gonna catch back up where we were at so we've got we're reading bitter water made sweet then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur they went three days in the wilderness so here they are all right so they they then Moses said he cries to the Lord and the Lord showed him a log and he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statue and a rule and there he tested them saying, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statues, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians for I am the Lord your healer. That is a great verse to highlight and keep. Keep that again. It says, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God. Right? What's the voice of the Lord? 
the Holy Spirit inside of you, right? And do that which is right in his eyes. Do what God tells you to do and give listening to his commandments. Listen to what he tells you to do and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. He will protect you from the diseases that the world wants to put on you, right? Because he is the Lord, your healer. That's a good one. That's a good one. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. So here they walk in to this land, and there's no water. And they're like, what are we going to do? And so he makes that water sweet, and then he, and after he gives it to them, and they're like, okay, we're going to do this. Then guess what? They come to that new place, Elam, and there was 12, there was an abundance of water. An abundance of water, even though a little bit while back there was none. God is good like that. He is so, so good like that. So how awesome. All right. Next week we're going 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I know there's a lot in here, so very good. We're doing good. So make sure that you read this throughout the week. Like don't, I mean, if you would just wait till Saturday, that's under, I understand. But if you can read a little bit every single day, like Monday start or even Sunday start, and then maybe Monday gets crazy and you can't, then do it Tuesday. That's why I only do five instead of seven days, because what will happen is if you don't get to do it every day, you got those two days like leeway so that if something does happen, you can uh, get it done. So we want to get that word read inside of us. So we want to learn God's laws. We want to learn his statues. We want to learn what God has for us. But we got to get in and listen to his word. We got to be able to know more about him. How do we get to know more? By reading his word and listening and then being obedient and doing it, right? When we, we're learning stories, we're learning things that happen to people and then how God told them things and then they still like went against him. And he's like, what are you doing? And then we saw him be faithful and take care of them. He's going to heal them. He's going to take them out of their situations. He's going to bless them. Even when situations do not look like they can be even favorable, God will do that. That's right. And he's going to do it in your life as well. Because I know he's done it in my life where I never even thought I could have what I have right now. God is good. Yes, he is. So let's pray and you guys can go about your day. Sound good? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your day, Lord. We thank you for your time to come together and learn and trust in your word, Lord Jesus. So thankful for the opportunity. And right now, Lord, I'm just going to ask that you just help remind us that you take care of us. You take care of us in the storms of life. You take care of us when it seems like the enemies are coming against us, when it seems like that big giant wall of the Egyptians are coming to track us down and they are going to run us over and we just don't feel like we can go on no more. And then look at you. You open up, part that sea, and let us walk through dry ground and come out the other side praising you and all good things. Didn't come through being broke. Didn't come through with less. Didn't come through being sick. Took us through it with abundance, with blessing, with favor, and with healing in our bodies, Lord Jesus. And you say so in your word. I'm excited to keep reading this book, Lord Jesus. There's so many truths that we're going to be using and knowing and getting deep down inside of us for our own lives, Lord Jesus. We love you so, so much. And thank you for this time together, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the people watching this, Lord Jesus, the people that are listening, that are inclining their ear to hear your word so that they are getting their lives changed by you. I'm. It blesses me. It blesses me reading the emails. It blesses me the testimonies. And I'm so excited. Lord, you're doing great things. You are doing great, wonderful things. Through this mist of this crazy storm, through this mist of life, crazy storm of life, I'm going to call it, because life is like that sometimes. And to see people come out of it and see them come out on top is awesome. And it just blesses me because you're awesome. You're awesome. And to for people to make that step and just do it and realize it and see it and go, okay, this is good. We don't have to live like this. Don't have to live in bondage. Don't have to live as a slave. Don't have to live in poorness. Don't have to live in unfavor. Don't have to live with sickness. Don't have to live with any of that, but can live a life green, abundance, health, favor, all those good things, Lord Jesus. And it's only because of you. And we're so excited. I'm so excited, Lord Jesus. Praying his blessing over people listening. Bless their homes. Bless their marriages bless their health, their relationships, strengthen them, Lord Jesus, send in peace and joy that only comes from you. Believe in all these things. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Fantastic. 
All right, you guys go have a fantastic, wonderful rest of your Saturday because it's a good day. It's a wonderful day you're here. You've got favor of the Lord. You've got the blessing of the Lord on you and your home. Now go get it. We're going to go get it like those Israelites, right? We're going to go get it. We're going to go. We're not going to be like the Israelites later on. That we're going to find out what happened. We're going to happen to the ones that went forward and were obedient. So, all right, we'll see you again. Maybe Sunday if I have a video, if we do something. If not, I'll see you on Monday for a day in the life. All right, have a fantastic rest of your day. Need a church? You're welcome to watch the church that I attend. They have a live stream at 930 Eastern Standard Time on Sunday morning. I will be there. I'll put the link below to my church and type in and say, hey, I'm there. And I'll type in and say, hey, I'm here too. So, all right, we'll see you again probably Monday, maybe Sunday. We'll see. Okay, have a great day.